I'm Aaron Logar. I'm the Collections and Education Specialist here, specialist here at the Shiloh Museum of Ozark History. And today we're going to walk through our exhibit hall and pointing out some of the changes that have been made to the exhibit as we complete our renovations here. As we walk through, you see a lot of graphics and on different walls. Little note, all the walls inside the museum exhibit hall here that aren't attached to the outside, we've actually picked up and moved during the renovation. So starting right here, this is our prehistoric exhibit. If you look this direction, you'll see our bluff shelter exhibit. Originally, there would have been a ramp here that would have gone up through this wall here to access that part of the exhibit hall. Through the renovation, we actually closed that off and built this wall so we could put in our bluff shelter instead. This is our Lewis Reed cabin. So that ramp would have brought you up the exhibit hall right about here, and then you could have accessed our cabin through this door. During the renovation of the exhibit hall, our exhibit manager gave the designer of this exhibit, Marie Demarocus, one rule. She couldn't actually physically change the cabin itself. Originally, when we were working on this cabin, there were two doorways. There was one there, and you can see this wall where there's a big giant map. There's actually a second doorway there that will lead you out of the cabin down a second ring. This is our Civil War slash 1900s exhibit going up until about 1920 or the start or the end of the First World War. In this exhibit, one little secret that you might not know about, we have some videos here that we had a local filmmaker make for us. And to hear that sound, it actually doesn't come out of the TV. Because we have some benching and seating here, the speakers are actually inside of our crate pile here and actually come out through some holes in the overlap with some of the crates. So that's how we can actually hear the videos. It doesn't come from here, it actually comes from behind you, which allows us to keep the volume a little bit lower, but still allows you to hear the video as you're watching them. This is our 1920 1950 part of the exhibit hall. A couple secrets in here. This is an old power pole or telephone pole that one of our staff members actually found in his father-in-law's front yard. So we actually chopped it into the correct size for us and brought it and actually installed it, which works well because during education programs, this allows us to talk about electrification in rural areas as well as urban areas such as Springdale. We try and reuse stuff as we take down old exhibits. So in this case, the metal roof that's part of our fruit shed now actually came off of an old front porch that we had here in the exhibit hall years ago. So when that exhibit came down, we actually used the metal roofing here and we've actually used it in a couple other exhibits as well. Last year we had an exhibit at Stilly, and if you remember, if you were able to come and see that, part of his workshop area, we actually had a piece of that in his workshop area as well. So this is our 1950 to the present exhibit. One of the things here is all these nice graphics on the wall. This is actually vinyl that we've been fortunate enough to print in-house. A lot of this is done by our staff. A lot of this we have worked with graphic designers to help as well. So if you turn around and look at that wall, one of the more striking features there is those two trucks. The one on the right, that Peterland Semi, we actually went out to a local trucking company here in Huntsville and actually took pictures of our uh, photographer at the time, Chris Johnson, was actually able to go out and take a bunch of pictures, so we used that as a backdrop. Here, he did the same thing, only on a country road to help do the contrast between country roads and highways that we have today. And these are actually, this is actually a real front end of a Peterbilt. We actually purchased it from a truck place up, I think, in Joplin, Missouri. And our exhibit manager worked to kind of scale it back so it wouldn't have as big a footprint. And same thing with this pickup truck bed. It's a real pickup truck bed that we bought from a scrapyard over in Silent Springs or West Silent Springs and we mounted that onto the wall here, the exhibit hall, to kind of give the contrast. One last thing I want to show you. So this common wall here, like I said, we moved most of the walls in this exhibit hall. This common wall we actually brought closer to this exhibit so we could have more room for the temporary exhibit on that side. And it's a pretty good way to show it. So if you ever, once we're here over here at the Shotgun Museum, and if you stand right here and look down this wall, currently we have Going Greek, which Kim Hosey did a great job on our exhibit. You can see the wall right down here. This wall was actually connected 
right here. So we actually took this entire wall section, detached it, and actually slid it that way so we would have a larger footprint for our temporary exhibit space. So we could host larger and travel exhibits in this area, which we couldn't before because we didn't have the floor plan we needed. So these are a few secrets that we've done to help renovate the Shadow Museum of Ozark History's exhibit hall.